up guys, number one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah, yes, list day. And today we're gonna go over the worst cards in Dude. Dude, what does mine say? Swag! Dual Devastator is actually a fantastic set, so I guess I should preface this list with the worst of the best are still good cards. Actually, all these cards are actually pretty solid. They're just not as good as all the other really good cards in the set. So least good is probably more kind to these cards, but uh, screw that. Let's be, let's be, let's just shit on them. Let's just do it. <laughs> The rules for this list are, um, I don't know, they're the least good cards. So, uh, even if they have their functions, uh, we at the Discord just figured that, um, most of the other cards in the set had more generic utility. So, there's that. Plus, I only did five. Uh, there's probably another five that are on top of this that are also not particularly good. So, these are the bottom five possible. So, there's probably a couple that, you know, could be honorable mentions, but I'm not going to do that. Because uh, I'm filming this all in one sitting and editing it all in the same day on my day off. So I'm trying to save myself a little work. Pro strats. But anyway, let's get started. Number five is Gaia Saber, the Lightning Shadow. This Link 3, made of two plus monsters, has 2600 attack, one down arrow, two left and right arrows. It's wholly unremarkable. Its best function is uh, an emerald target, I suppose. However, uh, there's another card in the set that's probably objectively a better Link 3, which bonks this onto the list. As well as any function that this card really did serve was definitely in the earlier days of Link Summoning when we just didn't have better options, and nowadays you just probably wouldn't play this thing. However, to its credit, it is certainly filling a niche of a non-effect Link 3, so like, Possibly in the future we might see some use for it because of that. So it's a good that it exists, but in this particular instance, in this case, during this current meta, it's not the best option. Especially when, you know, a Link Summoning Spam deck has such tight, tight extra decks as it is. Number four is Silent Graveyard. Silent Graveyard uh, is a quick play spell card with the following effect. Discard one card, effects that activate in the graveyard are negated. Now. Uh, again, this card's not bad, per se. It's certainly a minus two, which is, uh, pretty steep. I would, I would definitely say that this is an older card and it shows because that balance of a discard is wholly unnecessary. It being a quick play spell is pretty nifty, which means you can use it on your opponent's turn, which is probably the only time you'd really use it. I mean, I guess you could use it during a battle phase against a floater or something, but yeah, all right. It's just showing its age. Essentially, Boneless Necro Valley. Necro Valley is a much better card. It's also much more searchable and usable. It has a whole deck built around it. The card's just mediocre. However, in a bubble, if you were to use this against a deck that it'd be effective against, it'd be very effective. Like I said, it's the least good. And this is, it's, it's card economy is probably really what pushes this card over. Gate Blocker! This level 4 rock monster has the following effect. Negate the effect of your opponent's field spell cards. Your opponent cannot put counters on cards on the field. Your opponent cannot target monsters you control with card effects. Alright, um, this card is decidedly a silver bullet card. Anti-spell fragrance against pendulums. It's just a perfect side card against one deck. The issue is, um, the deck this is most good at doesn't really <laughs> exist. I mean, that Edamame deck, the spell, Edamion, Ed, 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 that thing, the spell counter, counter spell thing, is probably the most relevant card. Otherwise, this thing's next best uh, counter against is Kaiju's Pure. Actually, it's really good against a pure Kaiju deck. Well, except your opponent could just sack it for a Kaiju. It's got some three solid Floodgate abilities that are nice to exist in the game. There just really isn't, this really isn't a great function for the card. Like, there isn't a good deck for it to, to silver bullet. The last effect, where your opponent can't target your monsters with card effects, is probably the most relevant and most generic effect you can have. Uh, but what are you gonna do? Play Saruja and special summon this in defense mode? Like, I don't even, how you, how you plan on getting this on the board that doesn't just involve you normal summoning it in its weakest position? I, I don't know. Maybe in the future, again, just like Gaia, there might be a format where this thing's actually quite good. It's another one of those cards where it's just like, it's very specific at what it does. So unless the format is conducive to that, it's just not very good. So again, least good. 
Number two is Forbidden Apocrypha. Forbidden Apocrypha is a trap card that reads, Declare one monster type, fusion, synchro, or xe. If there's two or more of that monster type on the board, both players send that type of monster to the graveyard. It's basically like, I don't know, I feel like Compulse is probably a better card because it can bounce anything as opposed to sending things to the graveyard with a specific activation requirement of having to have two or more targets. Well, targets. And sending them to the graveyard is probably not the best way of getting them off the board because if they have any kind of floating abilities, they're going to probably activate. Yuck. So yeah, Compulse or Get Out are probably better options most of the time. It just has a very niche functionality where it is would be the best scenario. It's like when your opponent has a humongous board of Synchro, Fusion, or Xyz. So before Master Rule 4, that might have happened where this would net you more advantage than, let's say, Compulse or Get Out. But with Link Monsters, half your opponent's board is things this can't even hit. So it's like, how, how many cards are you sending to the graveyard? One or two? It, well, it has to be at least two. Unless you're sending one of your own and then you're just going minus. So, it, the Master Rule 4 really screwed the card up. However, again, given the right format, it might be okay. And we do have a uh, dishonorable mention, I guess. Um, it's not as crappy as these five cards, but it's still not great. Deco Talker uh, Extended Cut Edition. This Link 3, made of two effect monsters, two plus, two plus. It couldn't be two monsters, then it wouldn't be a Link 3. Duh. It counts as Decode Talker on the field. Why not? It gets 500 for every monster it's pointing to. It goes down and forward, just like Decode Talker. Neat. And it has a bonus effect where uh, uh, if a monster this card points to is destroyed by battle, this thing can make, uh, make a second attack. Uh, it doesn't say opponent's monsters, so it doesn't necessarily have to be the one, the forward one this thing's pointing to. It doesn't even have to be the one to do the killing, attack with it, crash one of the things this is pointing to so it gets enough i don't know there, there's some cheese i guess you can probably do with that second battle effect it's not great however we felt that it at least has an effect like compared to gaia and it's got better arrows so that's why gaia was five and this is like six i guess you'd call it because most of the time when you play this thing it's probably got a boost so it's probably stronger than gaia at the very worst case scenario so like, it's not great, but it's certainly got a function. And I think you could do some cheese with the battle effect. So that might be fun, I guess. And before we get to number one, we do have some sponsors for today's video. First sponsor is TCG Player. If you guys want any of these, these crummy cards or the good cards from Dual Devastator or just buy the box, you use my link down below in the description and you can you can get all of the Yu-Gi-Oh! mans from TCG Player. Also uh, brought to you by MetaMats. If you guys want a custom cloth play mat, use the troll the code, troll the code, the promo code troll the meta to get like 10% off. It helps the channel, helps MetaMats, helps everybody. So, woot! Moving up in the world. And number one is Wave Motion Cannon. Wave Motion Cannon is a continuous spell card that reads, During your main phase, you can send this card from the field to the graveyard to inflict a thousand points of burn damage to your opponent for every turn this thing has been on the field. It counts your standby phases. Uh, this card is woefully out of date. Uh, it best case scenario, it's an eight turn kill, <laughs> assuming you open it. Granted, you could probably play some cheesy Mystic Mind deck, had that not been put to one, making that kind of thing particularly easy to out nowadays. Floodgates in this game tend to be pretty solid do-nothing cards, because you flip them up, they stop your opponent from making some sort of game action. A lot of times, that prevents your opponent from making the game action they would have to do to thus out the card. For instance, a card preventing you like Vanity's Emptiness from special summoning would be very hard to out with, like uh, Nightmare Phoenix, which would normally be what you'd use to pop back row. So like, hey, Floodgates can do nothing on, on flip because they stop your opponent from naked stuff. This thing, however, doesn't do that. It just needs to sit there with a big target on its back, hoping you leave it alone for eight turns. Unless, go away, plane. What was I talking about? Oh, uh, assuming unless, I don't know, you had some other means of lowering your opponent's life points so you didn't have to wait so many turns. 
But again, it's just sitting there with a target on its back. It requires a bunch of more cheesy back row and a very out of date strategy in order to at least try to cheese a win with this thing. Again, it's not a bad card. It's just probably the worst card in the set. The least good. Anyway guys, that was the worst cards in Duel Devastator. Uh, as you can see, all these cards are actually not awful, so that should give you an idea of just how solid this set is as a reprint set. And especially if you are new to the game or you need to update your side deck options, there's tons of really cool cards in this set that you can use to bolster your, your back catalog of side options. So that's really what this card is. It's definitely card set. It's definitely a, a set with the competitive player in mind. Like these are the cards you need to be successful at a tournament. Except gate blocker. <laughs> Gamma still was reprinted in this. You're worried about that that pure kaiju fear, man. Oof. Anyways, that was the list. Remember guys, if you don't troll the better who will, I will see you guys next time. Huh. <laughs> Clicking the subscribe button's a good move. I guess there's a first time for everything. Feel free to click on these third-rate videos from a fourth-rate Yu-Gi-Tuber. But I don't have time for such amateurs. Come on, Mokuba. Let's go get ice cream. <laughs>